So we want x1 to be x sub 0 to be 1. And we'll see. Good. Do not delete what you have in the graphing calculator. Because you have the function already. Insert. So second and insert x minus, and now open parentheses, put the whole numerator, which is the function, in parentheses, then divide, parentheses of course, cosine x, close, minus 1, and close for the denominator. So this is my n of x, what I like to call Newton's function. Then I get out of there. And I call again variables. I go to y variable. No, I didn't mean that. I go to y variable. I go to enter. I call function 1, y1, and I plug in 1 in it, which is 1 radian. So I got 2.8. 3048772. Let's stop. Nobody would, would have expected this. We're talking about the interval 1, comma 2. Look where it jumped. It's okay if it if the next one is not 5 and the next one is not 15 and the next one 100. It's okay. As long as quickly afterwards it will converge to a number between 1 and 2 as expected. So therefore, the next step, I copy what I had, but I overwrite 1. This is one time I do this, and then from here on, there is no need to do it again. Second and the previous answer. And they will do it for perpetuity as long as I copy the entry. Enter. Ah, it's getting better. 2.04, I don't have to worry about it. 9555245. And now you should get closer and closer. Okay, nice. X sub 3, 1.93865612. And then the next one, and we want six decimal digits. Okay, we only have two right now, so X sub 4, 1.93456962. Okay. And we have five digits now. Closer. X of five. And I'm pretty sure the next one will be identical. It's too close not to be. Four, five, six, three, two, one, one. And probably the next one will be absolutely the same. And I will not copy it because I already have it. That's it. Done. So since they wanted six decimal digits, I will say 246, and I will give this number. You don't have to copy the next one. It's all identical. So that's where we stop. Because the next one is identical, or, the, or at least the six digits are identical. So basically, what's the difficulty here? Maybe finding this interval, carefully plugging this in the graphing calculator. This is very very difficult sometimes. Make sure you put parentheses and you're not missing anything, signs, whatever. And then the whole thing is just call the variable, plug in one, and then previous answer, previous answer, and you click, click, click. It needs a little bit of practice, but once you practice it with these, so we had three examples so far, uh, once you practice all these, it's going to be, it's going to take you three minutes at the most. Takes longer to punch in the function than to do the click, click, click here. Good. Anything else? Other questions? Are we okay with Newton's method? Do you think we need another? Anyone, please? Please help. Say something, please. We need another, or we move on to the last section, which is 3.7. I'm sorry, of course, 4.7. Anyone, please? Are we OK? Anyone? 
Anyone would like? So do you do you think you, we need another, or we move on to the last section? I think we move on. Okay, perfect. So the last section deals with optimization. What is optimization? It's a big, 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 big topic in mathematics. Just finding max min of different functions, different situations. Uh, real life situations, profit, minimizing cost, maximizing area, minimizing surface, who knows. And we will work on as many problems as you want. So allow me to go back to the book. Where is the book? Here it is. Allow me to plug in my device because it's running out of juice. And I don't want to worry about it. Okay, and we go to um, section chapter four, section four. That's se uh, seven, yes. And we will choose. I don't have anything to teach you here. Just practice. There is nothing. Applications to business and economics and exercises. That's it. And this is the end of the material for test three. I moved it to a week from today. So on Wednesday we will review. And I just remember that you asked me to post an old test and I did forget and I meant I remember this morning and I did forget again. So what should I do? Should I just, um, what should I do? I'm going to um, put this on my, on my wrist right here. So I don't forget again. Okay. Here's the first one that I'd like to start with. Then you pick. Then I pick, then you pick, and so on and so forth. The rate in milligram carbon per cubic meter per hour, gee whiz, at which photosynthesis takes place for a species of, is it phytoplankton? Okay, is modeled by, fine. So this is 10, a mouthful. So this would be P of I equals 100i over i squared plus i plus 4. Okay. i is the light intensity, of course, thousands of foot candles. Fine. For what light intensity is p a maximum? So the question here is find i for p max. Studying this so, so far in this class, what did we do? When we were asked to find a max or a min of a function, what was what was the first thing we thought about? From what we discussed so far in this class. First started, we said how we can do like the negative b over 2a, but then you said that there was a different way to do it now that we knew differentials. So we're we talking about we're talking about max min. Right. So when we are asked to find the max min of a function, what is the first thing that we need to determine? To find the max min. The first thing we need to determine is the when we were finding the max min of a function, what was it based on? What did we need to determine?
what gives the maximum of a function? What did we analyze in order to find the maximum? Like the movement of it when it stops increasing or decreasing? What What is based that on? Well, how do I determine the increasing, decreasing? What gives it to us? Our critical numbers? Yes, but if I need to find the critical numbers, what do I have to find first? Before I find the critical numbers? Say it again. You have to differentiate? Of course. So I have to find p prime of i. The max min is based on f prime of x. What about inflection points? Inflection points are based on the second. Exactly. That's all, which is not the point here. Although you could use the uh, second derivative test, but there is no reason to do that. Good. So the denominator is i squared plus i plus 4, everything squared. Since this is a factor here, I'm going to put 100 in front. I don't want to deal with it. It can wait patiently because it's a factor. How do we differentiate this quotient? I already put the denominator squared. So what do we have to write at the top? Can anyone help with the derivative of this function? The numerator or the denominator? I'm sorry. The denominator is done. So what do I have to write at the top in order to differentiate the fraction? Oh, you'd have to do 1. P perfect. I'm not going to write it. I'm just going to write i squared. I squared yep. plus I. Very good. Minus top times, times 2i. Yes, and please remember you have to put parentheses. If we don't put parentheses, you are only multiplying negative i by 2i and, and, and not by negative i by 1. So please be careful. Do not try to simplify. That would be a terrible mistake. So. Here I always say don't simplify, don't um, uh, distribute, factor, but there's nothing I can do here. I have to distribute. I have to distribute to these two terms. So I have 100, i squared plus i plus 4, minus 2 i squared and minus i, divided by i squared plus i plus 4 squared. The negative i with the positive i go away. The negative 2i squared plus i squared, this will be 100 in, in front. Because it's negative 2i squared plus i squared will be negative i squared. I took the negative outside, so this is i squared. And this is positive 4, but I took a negative outside. So. At the top, I had negative i squared plus 4. By factoring a negative 1, I have now i squared minus 4. Can anyone factor that for us? i plus 2 and i minus 2. Very good. I'm going to write it one more time here because it's squeezed in there. I don't like that. Good. So now can anyone um, tell us, because we know we are, we are talking about critical numbers now, um, uh, p prime of i being 0 and p prime of i being undefined. It's undefined when the function is undefined, so there is nothing here. Can anyone give us the solutions for this to equal 0? Two and negative two. Two and negative two, very good. Two and negative two. Awesome. So very good. I, the intensity, cannot be negative. So I will say I 
I need to study the sign of the derivative. If we don't show the study of the sign of, um, of this derivative, then we cannot get full credit for it. So I'm not going to put this in the, gra in the table because it's 0 to infinity. I'm going to put this in. And I have to study the sign left and right. So there is no point in studying the sign of this <clears throat> because it's always positive. There is no point in studying the sign of this because it's always positive. So the sign is given by this negative, of course, who cares about 100? It's given by the sign of negative i minus 2. So when I plug in 0, negative with negative 2 will be positive. And when I plug in 10, 10 minus 2 with minus in front will be negative. You don't have to do that, you can plug it in, but it will take me 10 minutes to plug this in the graphing calculator. And what's the point? This doesn't mean anything when it comes to the sign. This doesn't mean anything when it comes to the sign. And it will be a waste of time. I only have negative i minus 2. See, that's why I have these props here. Good, so obviously this will be the maximum. But what is the maximum? I don't know. The maximum will, P, will be P of 2. Where is P? P is here. So P of 2 will be 200 over 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. Nice. 2, 20. 200 divided by 10 is 20. But now I have to put that measurement unit. So it's milligrams of carbon, fine, per cubic meter per hour. Any questions? Any questions? Good, moving on. Let's choose. That's all we're going to do in this chapter. I'm, I'm, I said, I meant section. We're going to sometimes have to create the function. This was an easier situation. The function was given to us. It will not always be the case.